In this video, I go into an in-depth review of FreeNAS 11.2, the official release. So let's get us started on 11.2, the official release. As you see, the login screen has gotten a lot sleeker, and I really do dig this new look. Um, overall, it is far faster than the RC1 and RC2 versions from what I've seen, and far more stable. I've upgraded this uh, almost right when it was released and built it on the 5th when it was uh, came out and have had no problems. Now, in RC1, I had a lot of issues, and if you looked at my RC2 short upgrade review for, coming from RC1, you'll know that RC2 is better. And this is actually coming on the heels of RC2. Um, so this has uh, pretty much minor tweaks from RC2, but overall, this is just a great official release, and I really like what the FreeNAS team has done uh, in the direction it's taken. Um, as you see, the web interface is completely different. Uh, many things, most notably, the storage is now called pools instead of volumes from the legacy, and uh, a lot of things are in different locations. Please check the links below on this video. I'm leaving official documentation because you're going to need it. Uh, I know when I first jumped on the, this new interface, I absolutely hated it because I couldn't find anything even with all the new uh all the new information on the screen. I really like the way it looked, but I, again, I just didn't know it. And uh, you know, the knee jerk reaction coming from the legacy is, oh, it's, it sucks. I can't get anything done. But once you get in here, I really like just the general, how intuitive it, it is now. Um, it, it feels like a really good step. So going over that, that is pretty much the new web interface. Uh, obviously you have theming up here so you can go and change it and do all kinds of, uh, you know, all kinds of different themes. You pick your poison here. Um, I, I really like almost everything they have. So, um, that's just a welcome change. Now, getting into jails and plugins, this has been completely retooled. So if we go down to jails, uh, I don't have any right here because I have never been a fan of the plugins and jails and Freeness in the past. I had a really bad experience with Plex on RC1. Um, it was just very laggy, and I had to do some hacky network bridging to just get the thing to work and update properly. Um, and the performance just wasn't there for me. And I just overall, I was like, forget it. And I ended up just, uh, I have an entire virtualization set up here. So I went ahead and just did a standalone server for Plex. And if you have that option, obviously that'll serve you far better. But getting to what they changed here is it was using Warden and now it uses IOK. What that means to everyone is their old plugins, their old jails, when you update to this version of FreeNAS, those old plugins and jails have changed fundamentally. You have to migrate them, and if you actually look on their website, um, they have a migration link. So if you go into here, um, and I'll leave this also in the description, but it'll kind of overlay, hey, change from Warden to IO Cage, and there's an actual migration script to take a lot of your things. I don't personally recommend doing this kind of upgrade or migration if you can help it. Obviously, if you've been using like Plex on there for several years, that's yes, not an option. You just pretty much have to do the migration. But given the option, just uninstall those old legacy plugins and then reinstall them and download them from here in the jails or plugins page here. If you go A available, filter these out, install them manually. Um, you'll have a far better go of it than having to migrate because I've been reading the forums and some people that have tried to migrate have had some issues and uh, it's not, not a, I wouldn't recommend doing it. I would recommend just uninstall, back up the config, and then come in here into this new layout of the available plugins and manually install whatever you need. And they have some new ones. They've added and expanded this considerably. As you see, you can do like a personal GitLab and um, a lot of these have been updated to the latest and greatest. So I really like this layout. I just still am hesitant to use jails. 
I, I'm going to get past that and probably try again here soon and make a video about that. But overall, um, I really, really, really like this update. Some other notable changes here is encryption was added to basically encrypt the files before leaving to online media such as Dropbox, OneDrive, and uh, all those cloud storages and those options have been expanded some as well so you're not as limited to like amazon s3 and more of the business grade stuff and uh that's a very welcome change uh open zfs saw some minor tweaks in performance increases so better stability and performance coming from it um Removal of Grub and using the f native FreeBSD bootloader. That should increase stability as I'm not a big fan of Grub, especially when it comes to FreeNAS. Um, however, I think that's, a, again, a good change for just a stability standpoint. Uh, minor virtual machine fixes. And if you've watched any of my update reviews from FreeNAS in the past, almost all of them have this kind of tacked on the end. I still wouldn't use FreeNAS for virtual machines right off of it. Uh, I do use it obviously for like an iSCSI target or an NFS target, um, but I would not actually launch any VMs directly on my FreeNAS box. I've tried it in the past and it it's okay, but um, I think that's obviously gonna take some time to get flushed out. I'm gonna do another update on that and probably create a separate video just on virtual machine performance compared to uh, what it would be when you do a traditional like a Zen setup or VMware or uh, just a standard Hyper-V. So I'm gonna see what that looks like. In the past, the first time I did it, it was atrocious. I would highly like a recommend doing that, but uh, you know, it, things have changed. They've obviously flushed it out and seen bug fixes with each one of these releases. So with that done, let's go ahead and kind of drill down into the particulars of this release. And I'm gonna just kind of go through 11.2 menu structure so you guys can see all the things that have happened in 11.2. So starting with the actual dashboard here, I did notice a big uptick in performance before this was taking a long time to populate. Um, this is actually doing a lot better now. Um, I've noticed that it didn't, before almost all these would just be thinking. And now it seems like they're popping in a lot faster and, and more responsive. Um, as far as accounts goes, you'd set up your groups and users here. Um, nothing has changed in that regard if you're on any of the betas or RC candidate or release candidates of 11. Um, you can easily add those. We have general, most of this have stayed the same, and our traditional submenus here. As far as anything in here, uh, I haven't really messed with certificates or certificate authorities. Uh, and I probably should because I do want to eventually access this system from the outside. However, most of my work is done um, directly from a VPN as that is the most secure way. Anytime I've opened up any kind of SSH or anything like that, you just get hammered. So um, I haven't really messed around with too much of certificates or certificate authorities in Freenice. As far as cron jobs, I need to probably reset up my scrubs and uh, smart tests. Um, I think I have this from here. Uh, side note, if you haven't already set up your smart tests and scrubs, uh, scrub tasks, uh, please see my video up at the top here. I'll go ahead and link it up in the top. And I highly recommend setting these up so it's running on your disks. Um, from here, this task, these are the two main things you need to do is the smart test and the scrubs, just as just general maintenance on your system. Network configuration, honestly, this I haven't ever messed with because all this is set up static when I'm setting up the FreeNAS. Uh, in the install video, I go over that. I'll also link that up in the top right there. As far as pools go, if we go down into our storage, this has changed a bit. So when you actually are looking at your pools now, uh, before you'd click in and it'd come to like a configuration page, but this now is kind of just uh, pretty straightforward. I like this in my video on how to replace a failed FreeNAS drive. 
uh, I go into actually replacing it and it is done from the status screen in this pool. So if we go into here using the cog, uh, you can actually take off or take a computer or disk offline and then replace it directly here. So that's uh, uh, kind of nice. And also you can extend your pool. Um, so if you are replacing a disk, you come to status. If you're extending it, you come here and you know that's a pretty standard snapshots not much has changed in this um discs this is a great heads up uh, i like how it is here not too much let's go ahead and edit one of these drives just to see what that looks like as you see uh all our standard options are here i don't think i've ever done anything in this screen as far as directly editing a drive most of this i leave factory and then import um, which I don't really need to import. A lot of times if your FreeNAS fails, you will use the import uh, pools command, which is just the add import existing and then pull it in. Let's say your FreeNAS crashes, make sure you're doing backups. Um, directory services, that's mainly for those with Active Directory in their house using server. And then the main shares there most people will use is the NFS share. Um, and uh, Samba or SMB shares um, right here. iSCSI is also used. I use that for virtualization, um, which I do have a uh, target on here for my Zen virtualization setup. Services, um, Smart and SMB, obviously SSH and all the other ones I actually have shut down right now, but uh, those are gonna be the big ones is iSCSI, NFS, if you're using any NFS shares, smart just for maintenance, and then SMB for your general Windows shares. Plugins and jails, I already touched on, and reporting. So reporting, uh, I like it. It's a little bit more fancy now, and I, I like these heads-up displays. How useful they are, um, time will tell. Uh, overall, hey. It's kind of neat. It's like uh, a lot of the information here you get from a standard smart test. When I went into actually running those, I, I basically did it all from the shell down here. But uh, this is where, you know, it kind of shows a lot of that information, which is great. Virtual machines, nothing. Display system processes, just the standard. And then shell, which uh, I did go into doing like smart CTL and doing smart scans directly in here, enforcing uh, those and getting the results from the smart scans. All right, with all that, that's just a quick rundown of 11.2. Obviously, I just updated a couple days ago, and one thing I haven't done yet, which I always recommend when you update, you go ahead and do this. Go into General, under System, and then let's go ahead and save this config and save. This goes ahead and downloads this file, which I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna copy this, go to my main pool and drop this right in here. Um, so this actually gives me a basic backup of it and you'll see an RC1 here. Let's go ahead and delete that. And then I'm gonna copy this also onto my Dropbox folder. It's a really small file, only about a meg. So I highly recommend at least going in, backing those up and that way, if I ever needed to, um, I can easily take that config, restore it, or upload it here on a fresh FreeNAS. So I would reinstall FreeNAS, upload the config with the old drives on the new hardware, and everything would be gravy. Well, that's it for today's video. This was just a brief overview of 11.2, the official release, which I, if you couldn't tell, love it. And um, I'm looking forward to FreeNAS's future. It's obviously my go-to. I use it extensively, mainly for the sharing. I'd love to break back into the jails and virtual machines in the future. But overall, that's what I use it for. And uh, I will leave everything in the description as far as the FreeNAS descriptions and links. So please check those out if you want to see the in-depth release notes. They're down there. And if you're switching from the old legacy web interface, 
please check out the wiki. It helped me immensely coming from legacy into the new web version of it. I was constantly in there to figure out where things are and how things work. Um, also check the info card up at the top. You'll see I periodically throughout the video dropped most of my FreeNAS 11 uh, tutorials on drive replacement, backups, um, just general maintenance in it. And it's just so much different from the old legacy that you need to know all the new configurations and working with FreeNAS.